Okay, here's the long-awaited, much-anticipated video on how I make a Snyder's Point. This might take more than one video to show this, but I'm going to turn the camera on and I'm going to nap away and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So first thing is you need to pick out a good rock. This is my, my rock supply here. And there's more uh, in other areas, but this is what I pretty much go after to get my main rocks. All kinds of stuff here. There's even glass and there's a, uh, right back there, is a Clorox bottom uh, for making Clorox points. It's a little bit of obsidian. There's some of Flint's balls, um, hornstone there. And a lot of this white stuff is is uh, Kia Cook that I got from Craig Ratzett. So the piece, as I look here, uh, that catches my eye is this one right here. I mean, it's got the Snyder shape already, so I guess my job would be to just thin this thing down and uh, turn it into a Snyder's Point. So I'm going to get set up and uh, you can watch me do it just the way I do it. I probably won't stop much. I'm going to keep it my pace because like in anything, once you develop your rhythm, you got to keep going because if you don't and you lose your rhythm, then you're going to mess up. So anyway, I'll be back. Okay, let's give this a shot. I'm all set up here. You see I've got some tools right there set up that I might choose to use one of those billets and I got a little brain tan on my lap here to keep my pants from getting ripped up by these things so I'm gonna get started and uh, you'll see it just the way I do it This is all trimming set up for a platform and you see me take these quick little strokes and uh, pay close attention to the angles that I'm striking with. Uh, it will help you out quite a bit if you're having trouble uh, figuring this out. So as you can see, I've kind of trimmed the edge up a little bit. Kind of looks like a tool right now at this point. So let's take a few flakes off here to balance this thing out. And I think I'll take them off the bottom here. I call this the bottom because the cortex is there. Oh, so far so good. I hog a lot of material off um, this way. Doesn't take me so long if I put it down pretty quick. That one piece broke off, and I'm glad it did because that would have uh, broken a little later when I didn't want it to. So it did me a favor by coming off right then and there. It's going to make a smaller Snyder, but it's okay. These are the kind of flakes you really want to come off. They do a lot of good. Actually, that's, that's an overshot flake because when it came off, it went all the way across and took off some of the other side. But that's okay because that was a rough area. And what it leaves you is a nice smooth edge. Now that's razor sharp. So before I do anything, I grind that because I don't want to drive it into my hand. That would not be a good outcome. Try a little smaller billet here. Let's we'll see what happens with this. It's got the same force. We'll, we'll know soon. Takes a nice flake. Not quite as big as what I wanted, so I'm going to go back to the bigger billet. More mass, more weight, and follow through. As you can see, what I mean by that. These are really thin flakes. And the thing about these flakes is when they come off, what you ideally want is for them to feather out. 
like this. So you can't even see where the flake is, and then it just comes off. There's no hinges or anything like that left behind. So that's that's a good removal. Now this is a little tricky in here because there's a little plane or a little nibbled out area that seems to be in the stone and I gotta be careful that I don't cause a hinge to form there so I'm not gonna go directly at it I'm gonna kinda come up from the bottom a little more to get to it like that see that takes that up now it's a little more isolated and I can probably get a good shot now that's a good platform okay that did, that did a lot of good Right there and it got under that little plane now there's a still a little bit more left there and uh, I can probably pop that right now but I want you to notice look at these flakes one two three those are all thinning flakes and that's real key to getting a Snyder's because you want to make a flat thin uh, preform so let's see if I can pop this one and uh, get underneath that it sounded good and it did exactly what it should have done now sometimes you'll notice the first part of the flake will break off. I didn't support this flake too hard on the back side so what it does is it causes it to to lift up somewhat like this and bend and when it bends it's still pushing forward but what it does is it um, it snaps off at the bend. So keeping the flaking pattern going it look it's looking pretty good. So I'm pretty satisfied with most of this back side here. So I'm going to just take a couple more little flakes and then flip it over and get rid of some of this high spot here. So you're seeing this in real time, uh, the way I do it. Um, if you've ever watched me nap, you think probably I go too fast and believe me, <laughs> I'm a lot slower now than I used to be because I was way more impatient. My neighbor starting up one of his snowmobiles right on time. Okay, look at, look at how nice that flake popped off there. This is uh, good material. I do like working with Kia Cook. Um, I consider it quite predictable as far as the way the flakes come off. Okay. You see, it's, they're feathering out really nicely. So once again, you know, notice, I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but you're getting a real pattern of uh, thinning flakes and it's keeping it nice and uh, flat. I don't know what my neighbor's doing, there's no snow out there, but hey, you know, he's having a good time, so can't fault him for that. Okay, and you notice this is getting a lot thinner now, too, from what I started out with. And uh, that's, of course, the goal, is to thin it down. So now I'm going to try to leave this side alone somewhat. I mean, there are more flakes to take. And maybe one more here, just to get it while I can. And that was perfect. Come right off there. This next one will come over here and meet that one. Because it kind of left a little bit of a thumbnail there, but not much. All right. A little shaping now with the billet, just hogging off this material. Uh, this method that I use, the downward stroke, um, provides great accuracy. So um, I've stuck with this since it, you know, came. I discovered it, and it's been really, really good to me. I haven't shot this video before because I didn't know. If you would think it was boring to sit and watch me take each and every flake off a piece of rock, but I'm going to chance it and see what you think. And uh, there'll probably be more than one video, but I'll let the camera roll here for a while. Okay, oh, that one, that one come off, but I need to come from this direction to thin this high area here. So let's take care of that problem right now. Right now and then I'll stop and I will pressure flake off a few flakes so that I don't lose much um, material and I set these up a little closer. If I could do it with the billet 
uh, but I might reduce this down in size more. I'll really use the billet to pop the big thin flakes off and not these pressure flakes. So I'm staying with the heavy billet. Um, seems to be the one that works the best. I'm going to have to give this a pretty good pop because it's got to come down through here. So let's see. Oh, it did. It went all the way down through there. Very nice. Still a little bit of a booger in this area here. Um, not too concerned as of yet, but if it doesn't disappear soon, I will have to go after it. Okay, let's see if we can get a thinner to come across here. Yeah, that felt pretty good. Okay. That was a real key one to get because I was getting a lot of uh, problems up in this area here because I had a uh, one that terminated really weird up here and um, that just cleaned out that whole mess. So anyway, let's keep going and see if we can keep thinning. Now see, I hit that about three or four times and it didn't go. That's a sign that the platform is not right and you want to reset that platform. It's pretty tough. I know a lot of folks have trouble with Kia Cook. Um, I can understand why, but it, it does love heavy percussion, which is something I'm a huge fan of. I'm going to try to land on maybe this platform and maybe this platform, see those two, and uh, see if I can get some thinning. Now that one was very good up in the tip. See, I just caught the very edge of that one, and that caused that flake to come off there. Okay which kept me uh, in line and uh, thin and no, and no hinges. So let's try the next one here. Hopefully that does as well. Sounded good. Again, another nice thin flake. And what that's doing is it's thinning it down and then I just come back here. And this is where I had the overshot. I'm gonna just trim it up a little bit and then shoot some flakes back to it. Now, I'm gonna try to get one to come up in there. I don't want to get too aggressive with it because it could cause me a bigger headache. It came out perfect. So, some more thinning in this area. Maybe a little bit more here. Feels good. Yeah, there it goes. Right there. Okay, it's looking good. Now this, this is the point where um, a lot of guys have trouble when they get thin like this and uh, they start backing off a little bit and that's the worst thing you can do. You still got to hit it just as hard as you were hitting it in the beginning. Just got to make sure your platforms are right. And um, if you back off, the flakes of course are going to run short. Thinning is what I consider the base because this is where all the notching, stemming, whatever you're going to do to the point is going to occur is in your bottom part. So you got to get it nice and thin. And uh, these are coming off pretty good. Okay. Nice, nice clean flake removal. I gave that a good pop that time. I didn't hold back too much. And notice one thing when I'm napping is I'm always supporting the entire piece as much as possible. I've got my fingers spread around the back side of it. I got my I always got something touching the tip um, because you don't want to have any end snap. And that's a huge problem for flint nappers is end snap. Now here's a high spot here. Let's see if I can pop this one. You know hitting in the middle of the point is a tough thing sometimes but if you hit it hard you get that flake right out. That's perfect uh, removal. It kept the pattern alive. and so We'll take a couple more here and then I'm going to take a serious look at it and possibly maybe do a little pressure flaking and finishing it. So I took it right there. This is the area where notching or stemming is going to occur. So I want to make sure I get that thin. 
Always think ahead if you can, you know, to the next flake. That way, um, the, the flake you remove hopefully sets you up for the next one, and so on all through the piece. Okay, let's see. Now I do need to do something with that because that has been, um, been waiting to be reduced a little bit. So let's hopefully get some good flakes to come off. But I didn't feel right, so what I'm going to do is take a small series of flakes here to bevel this. I cannot believe my neighbor has got a snowmobile running on a 50 degree day. So please uh, ignore the uh, sounds of that. They're good neighbors, so I'm not complaining. I, you know, you put up with stuff when you live in town, and uh, if that's all I got to put up with, I, I can't complain. Okay, Let's see if we can pop some more flakes here. Now I, I really need to take a seriously um, good flake right here because this will keep our pattern alive, and this flake here is the key right here. Oh, it's a good platform, and it came off nice, so we're good to go. No uh, unexpected surprises so far, which makes me very happy. You just never know when you're banging on a rock what can happen at any time. See, not, the platform's not right. You can't keep hitting it. It'll come off if you keep smacking it, but it's not going to give you the desired results. Okay, a few more of these base thinning flakes, and I think we're, we're going to be good. That was a really nice one. It took out a whole bunch of stuff down in the bottom, as did that one. Okay, now, you really wouldn't believe how thin this thing is getting, and um, of course that's the goal um, of napping these bifaces out is to thin them down uh, to be representative of the type of point you're working on. At this point it's called a north blade and uh, it's a thin one. I gotta see if I can get something around the tip. This is always the danger zone up here so you gotta be careful not to get too crazy. That one came off just the way I wanted it to. You know if you I find that if I take too long looking at a problem I'm gonna overthink it I'm gonna wreck it. So I just quick, I go for it. Jump on it, quick. So, a little more trimming. Let's take a look at this and see what we've got. Okay, um, here we are. It's a nice, really thin north blade. Pretty well balanced. I'd say decent flake patterns on it. Um, doesn't look too boogered up. And really, there's not a whole lot left to do on this piece, but uh, do some pressure flaking and um, and then putting the stem in this, because I consider Snyder's points, not notch points, but stem points. So, I'll be back.